or down. Volatility won't quick. What is the next move? Let's bring in Lee Munson, Portfolio Wealth Advisors President and CIO. So Lee, you had two numbers that jumped out in the note that you sent over. So next stop, 2750 or next stop, 3450. Where do you think we're That's going here? Uh, I think we're going to go and retest the lows. And the only thing that bothers me is I really want 2750 because it's a nice, clean 20% down day or, you know, a down market. Um, but here's the thing. This could get worse. And if it doesn't, I just need to see a capitulation somewhere around that 2750. So the market may not give it to you, Jen. Um, the market may stop short at 2800. Um, the market may go lower, but I think you have to see another round down before it's ready to get on the offense and you start stabbing the bid. And Lee, when you look at what the Fed did this morning, um, you know, I think a lot of people are looking at this like, oh, what does the Fed know? Does this mean things are actually worse than we currently believe? Uh, what did you make of that action? Was this something that it seemed like the Fed was boxed into doing? And, you know, we talked last year a number of times about how the Fed was driving everything. You know, the market was up 30% because the Fed's out here easing. Uh, it doesn't really seem to be having the same effect. How do you look at the central bank going forward here? Uh, I think I'm worried. You, you know how you have those like smart guys that run billions and hundreds of billions of dollars and they keep saying things like, what's going to happen when the Fed loses credibility? I think we had that moment today because if, the, if we were to rally, it means it would have meant that the liquidity driven thing, like forget the fundamentals, but we're going to have liquidity. We should be up today. The fact that we're selling off in the face of this, I could sit here and say it's Super Tuesday. I could sit say it's, it's the Bernie Sanders effect. No, I think everybody knows that nothing's going to get solved by a rate cut. I've come around to that idea over the weekend. And I think a lot of people smarter than me who've been saying this since last week that only fiscal versus monetary policy is going to work. We're seeing that happen in markets right now, and I think the Fed means nothing. That's why it's so perplexing today. Lee, it's Brian Chung. So uh, everyone's been a loser, basically, in equity markets so far. But I'm wondering, it appears as if in the NASDAQ, for example, the falls had been just slightly not as bad as maybe in the broader market. Are there certain pockets that you're watching, certain dynamics that you're watching, even within equity markets, that tell you maybe there are some sectors aside from the consumer staples that might be able to weather this coronavirus uncertainty better than others? Oh, you're going to hate me, Brian. OK, oh, just no. when I see you in person, you can punch me on my shoulder. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, blew, I, I blew out my entire gold position several hours ago, and I put everything in short-term treasuries, and I told my traders, here's what we're doing. If this thing goes down, we're not going to try to pick things. We're not going to try to say, like, is energy oversold, boss? It's at a 10-year low, or tech, it's, it's so rel we're just going to buy the S&P 500. You know why? It's the most boring trade. You know why? Because it works, and that's where you have the liquidity, and you're not going to get a problem with some specific sector. So I've got to say, while I appreciate all the other analysts trying to figure out you know, who's going to make money once a space shuttle blows up, I'm telling the public right now, <laughs> stick with the S&P. Keep it stupid, people. Well, I appreciate that, and I won't punch you. I promise you. But I'm wondering, you, you just said you liquidated your gold position. You're, what are you watching in, in, in gold markets? moving today. What is that telling you about uh, the way that people are sensitive to the dynamics in the market right now? Um, OK, let's be honest. I think all it says is that Lee Munson uh, clearly doesn't think he can trade gold as well as he thought. I was buying this thing last year about 1500 thinking, oh, trillion dollar deficits. We're going to see 1750 on gold in two years. I just had the gold in there as a I took it off my intermediate corporate bond position because I didn't, you know, I thought I'd make more money. And stupidly today, I have. I've made a lot more money in gold than, than what I took it from, which are intermediate corporates. The reason I'm selling gold, um, something's wrong with the gold markets. Uh, it should be higher. I think a lot of people are going to look to sell gold so they can buy real things. And honestly, while I can go to my clients and say, we made a lot of money in gold, like we should be happy. What we sold to buy gold made more money, but Lee was wrong. Lee needs to pull it back. Lee needs to get out of that gold position because the real game is in equities and the real game is making sure that your short treasuries, those won't go down 5% if the market does. And so I need something that I can count on mm -hmm. at 2750 or 2800 and gold, it's acting weird. I don't have a feel for it. I'd rather tell you that than try to 
BS you and suggest I got a handle on gold. I just don't, I just, I got to get out. I just don't know. And I've made money. Uh, Lee, the market's come back a little bit here from the lows, but still late in the day, we keep, yesterday we had this huge rally in the last 10 minutes. And then uh, I literally have no idea right now. We could end down 300 or we could end down 900. Is mm -hmm. the character of the market when you're talking to your traders, is this something that you've experienced before? Do you think that mm -hmm. this is structural? What's happening here? Um, not, not, to, not to try to sound kind of immodest, but I, I've seen this several times before. Um, this doesn't, you know, your biggest up days, I mean, the biggest up day in kind of my career was back October 13th of 2008. The S&P went up 11.5%. But these big volatility days, these are normal. I mean, look at where the VIX is. So I'm not really concerned about the big volatility days. I just thought it was interesting the last week we didn't have a big surge up. So the fact that it happens on a Monday the following week, that's interesting. But I would expect to see big shooting up days, and you don't want to chase that stuff until you see it go lower. So I've seen it before. It doesn't really bother me. But I have to tell you, last night, like, you know, I didn't feel well. I got real nervous last Thursday. And when, when people like me start getting nervous, that means that we should take this seriously as Lehman Brothers back in 08.